In this video, we'll be learning how to serve multiple S3 buckets via CloudFront. You might come across scenario or uh, let's say some project requirement where you have to keep your content separated in multiple buckets instead of folders and you but you want to save uh, serve all those buckets via the single cloud, same CloudFront buckets so that you can save some money. Okay, so let's start. So I'm within my AWS console and I'll open S3 in a new tab. Along with that, I'll even open CloudFront. Ignore all the other buckets. I'll start with creating a new bucket. So I'll give it a name, let's say Wim Web Bucket. So this will be the bucket which I'll be using to distribute or to host or serve my website content. I'm within US East Northern Virginia region. I don't need to do all next and set up other properties or go through all these other options. So I'll just hit the create button. I need to create one more bucket. So I'll name it Wim hyphen blog hyphen bucket. Again, I'll create this in Northern Virginia region. So now I have both my buckets ready, Wim web bucket and Wim blog bucket. I'll switch to my CloudFront distribution tab and I'll create a new distribution. So I'll click on this blue button, create distribution. We'll be using this web distribution. So just click on get started. Now on the origin name, we need to select the web S3 bucket. So I'll just go ahead and select from that drop down list, my Wim web bucket, which I just created. Origin path will be blank because I'll be keeping all my files within the root directory. So I didn't, don't need to set any origin path here. Origin ID is pre-populated for us. I'll select yes for restrict bucket access so that I don't let anyone access my contents using the S3 URL. Instead, I will force them to use CloudFront URL. I'll go ahead and create a new identity because this is the first time I'm creating my bucket and this is even a new bucket for me comment is pre-populated so we don't need to do anything now with respect to grant read permission in bucket let's just select yes so that CloudFront creates a bucket policy and attaches it to our s3 bucket Wim web bucket and we don't have to manually do that we can leave these settings as it is now under viewer protocol policy I'll select redirect HTTP to HTTPS so that I'll make sure all my connections are on secure channel I can leave even other settings default no need to change anything else here now just for the information purpose now if, if you want to serve your bucket or your content instead of using the random URL which CloudFront generates so if you want to serve your content using your own domain name let's say you have bought domain name abc.com and if you want to serve it via abc.com instead of some random characters dot cloudfront.net then you need to provide that abc.com here or let's say some subdomain so web.abc.com here so until and unless you provide it here you won't be able to map your domain name within the route 53 service which is aws dns service and you won't be able to serve your content using your custom domain name now as of now we don't have any such requirement so I'll just leave alternate domain names blank. Now, with regards to SSL certificates, as I'm not using any alternate domain names, I can stick to default CloudFront certificate. But if you want to serve it with your custom domain name, then make sure you select your custom SSL certificate. Otherwise, your users, your viewers will receive SSL errors within their browser. Now, under default root object, I'll provide index.html so that whenever I hit that CloudFront URL, I don't need to provide the path myself slash index.html. CloudFront will automatically pick up the index.html from its location and it will serve us. 
we don't need to enable logging for now and that's all the setting we need to do and I'll hit create distribution now I'll go in the left panel just click on distributions to see the list of your distributions here so we see that this CloudFront distribution which we just created now is still in progress so it will take around roughly five minutes meanwhile let's do one thing let's switch back to our s3 buckets and let's upload the files here so i'll start with my vim web bucket i'll upload my index.html file here now you can even do a drag drop if that's good for you or if you can or you can just use this upload button and add the files manually so i'll just go to that location put in the contents I'll upload my index.html file and I'll upload it. Awesome. So now I have my index.html file here. So this is for my website. Now, because I'm in the in this bucket, I'll just make sure whether CloudFront has added the buck, required bucket policy or not. So just click on the permissions tab. Then let's click on bucket policy. And here you would see a uh, s3 bucket policy created or applied for us by cloudfront itself so we don't need to do this manually whenever we select that yes update bucket policy cloudfront will do this for us so this is restricting access of all our s3 files or objects using just the cloudfront distribution which we have created now i'll just go back now I'll add contents within my blog bucket. Now to enter contents within the blog bucket, I'll first create a folder with the name blog. Now I'll go within that folder and here I'll upload my file. So I'll go within the blog folder and there is an index.html here as well and I'll upload it. Now these index.html files are very simple. They are not stylish or using any JavaScript or CSS. They are just plain HTML files, which will just help us determine whether our request is going to our web bucket or to our blog bucket. That's all. All right, cool. So we have both our web bucket and blog bucket ready. We have uploaded the files. Now let's switch back to our CloudFront distribution. And let's just use this refresh icon to see if it's deployed. And yes, it's deployed. It's not even five minutes and we have our deployment ready. Great. Now, let's just click on our CloudFront distribution ID. So we have already created our CloudFront distribution, which is pointing to our web bucket. So if you just click on origins and origin group tab, you will see there is an origin which we have added while creation of this CloudFront distribution, which is pointing to our web bucket. Now, if we want to serve another bucket, so we need to create one more origin. So just click this blue button, create origin. Within the drop down, this time we need to select WIM blog bucket. Under origin path, I'll leave it blank. Origin ID is pre populated. Just like for our web bucket, I'll restrict the bucket access. I'll create a new identity and I'll select yes for update bucket policy so that I don't again have to go and manually create a bucket policy and set it for my blog bucket as well. I'll just click the create button. Great. So we have just added the origin, but now we need to do one more thing so that whenever we type cloudfront.net domain it serves our website but whenever we type cloudfront.net slash blog it serves content from a blog bucket so let's click on the behaviors tab and we now need to create behavior so within path pattern i'll provide blog slash star so whenever cloudfront sees that the path after the base url so suppose let's say it's uh, some alphanumeric characters dot cloudfront.net slash blog so now cloudfront will identify that there is blog in the path and it will use 
this origin which is our vim blog bucket to serve the con content instead of using the web bucket now if you have uh, mistakenly selected your web bucket you might have some different name uh, I would like you need to have a different name for sure because s3 is a uh, uh, S3 buckets are globally unique. Their names must be globally unique. So just make sure you have your blog bucket selected here. Under viewer protocol policy, I'll just choose HTTP to HTTPS. I can leave uh, all these settings as it is. So I don't need to change anything else. And I'll just click on the create button. Awesome. Great. So I have added my second origin which is pointing to my blog bucket i have even added a behavior which looks for blog pattern so if the word blog is present within a url path it will serve the content from blog bucket now let's visit the distributions so either you can click on the cloudfront distribution here or you can just click on distributions from the left panel so that we can see the list now as of now, it is in progress, but let's just see if we can view our output. If not, we'll just let this get finished. So I'll just copy the domain name. I'll open it in a new tab. And there we go. So I'm able to see my website. So if I'm not adding any path, by default it is visiting my blog uh, sorry my web bucket now let's see if i provide the path here blog will it be able to serve my blog index.html file or not and yes there we go so this time we are receiving our output from the blog file if i again just remove it it is my website so this is how you can have multiple s3 buckets served via a single cloudfront distribution now make sure you delete all these resources which you have created so that you don't end up with bill at the end of the month once you are done with your practice as well all right now here i just want to add an additional point now we created an s3 bucket in northern virginia region but Suppose if you are creating buckets in any other region apart from Northern Virginia region, and if those buckets are newly created and you attach them to your CloudFront distribution, and whenever you just use your CloudFront distribution or view your CloudFront URL within the browser, you might sometimes receive access denied. If you are receiving that, just have a look at your URL. It will look different because it won't be your CloudFront URL instead whenever you use your CloudFront URL and hit enter it will get redirected to your s3 bucket now This is an issue with CloudFront. So it takes uh, some time uh, So you, you you just need to wait for few hours until you can see your CloudFront distribution serving your content so whenever you see that access denied and uh, along with that, if you also see that whenever you hit your CloudFront URL, you are being redirected to an S3 bucket with that access denied error, then don't panic. Just wait for some time, just wait for a few hours and your CloudFront distribution will be ready to serve your content. Great. So thank you for watching this video. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos.